as you walk through the valley of the shadow of hell, you will realize that there is something ahead. Something that lurks behind the dark veil. A veil that is beyond our own comprehension. What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond, Beyond the Void. Void Horror Podcast. That's right. It's episode 148 this week, and uh, we're going to be talking about two movies we watch, which are Madman from 1981 and Slaughterhouse 1987. That's right. Two 80s movies that we're going to be talking about, um, about mad people, crazy people, murderers, slashers, killers. Uh, these are some old movies that... I, one of them I have seen, but it was like when I was like a kid and I remembered absolutely nothing about it. And then one of them I haven't seen. So it was kind of a nice little surprise to do this week. So I hadn't seen either one of these until we did the podcast. Nice. But see, they, that's what it's all about. It was good, though. That's what I'm trip. saying, man. We got to watch shit that we've never seen. Some people just like to watch movies they have seen, and yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> like, I like to watch those too, but don't you want to be surprised? Like a little. <laughs> this is a little. I mean, that's the the, the whole fucking. You got to flick the bean every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> the horror bean, yeah. yeah. But yeah, guys. So I hope you're having a great week this week. Um, we're back. It's not a new movie this week, and we are planning to do a grave plots here in the near future. There's just a lot going on. I have a shit ton of movies that I just got that you probably have seen in my movie hall that I just got yeah. so I've been pretty busy and I really want to dive into those and then we'll definitely do a great plots a little while later but we got a lot to do so there's a lot to work be done so also I want to give a big shout out to Giovanni from New York we sent out the package to him hopefully he's got it by now I wanted to at least give him a big shout out because he is the one that won our giveaway which we included some blu-rays some dvds some stickers of BTV and a lot more uh, we're going to be doing this every month guys so if you didn't win this time no worries as long as you're signed up to the VIP club we can and will possibly pick your name for next month and so on and so forth so we're going to try to do this for for quite a while each month as a thank you for listening to the podcast and uh, being a part of what we do because we always consider you guys just as big a part as the show because if it wasn't for you we wouldn't be doing this so thank you Giovanni thank you for listening everybody sign up to BTV VIP club at longlivethevoid.com but uh, how are you how's your week oh it was all right uh you know doing the the same shit I usually do. Well, you said you moved some, help somebody move. That's always oh, fun. Oh, that this, yeah, we got to do it this weekend too. I guess. Yeah, and to, what is it? Uh, we're in July, which is one of the hottest times in fucking Arizona. Right. <laughs> and I didn't even know about the second move until like I was helping the dude move, and he's like, "Oh, well, you're helping us move next weekend, right?" Right. And I was like, "Uh." Oh, they said that. <laughs> oh. And I was like, you know, he's one of my best friends, so I could be like, "No, nah, well, fuck you, buddy." Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and so it's like, yeah, just let it be known if you got a truck, you're automatically Dude, fucked. I one summer moved, or not one summer, one year moved. I think it was five times. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, all of my stuff. So I became pretty used to it, and I was actually helping people move. It was the first time in my life, because I appreciated how many people helped me during those times. So I was like, oh, you need help moving? Okay, yeah, I got you. I got right. you. But let me tell you something, guys, and I know it's hot wherever you are, but Arizona's a fucking desert, okay? <laughs> and you still fucking sweat no matter how dry it feels. Once yeah, well, you And always, once you start sweating, you don't stop. They always throw the humidity in there. It's like, well, you guys don't have humidity. I will agree. I don't like humidity as much. Well, yeah, humidity is bad to a sense, but I I don't know. Some senses I'd rather take the humidity. I don't know. Yeah. You can't tell me that, like, when it's, well, like, it'll probably, I bet you this year we'll hit, like, 118 easy, like, 
But yeah, no, I mean, it, it does get hot out here, guys. So just, you know, calm down. All right. Like, it, it's a dry. We're all heat. in this together. You know what I'm saying? I don't like humidity, but it's because I've been out in this kind of weather and I'm used to a certain level of, uh, of hot. It's, right. You know, anyway. Well, this is, it's so hot that you can't touch your fucking, your handle of your fucking door without, like, getting your shirt around it first or something. Right. You know? <laughs> Like getting in your car is a whole new experience. It's like, hey, does anybody want to get in my easy bake oven or just regular oven for that matter? Like face melting heat. Yeah. yeah, dude, you touch your fucking the belt buckle like when you like. Go to, yeah, when yeah you it's get- like it burns your hand. You're like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like you got a welt on your hand all day because of that shit. It's fucking hot. Anyway, so I know you guys came here to talk about the weather, but today we're going to be talking about horror. <laughs> so just calm down, weather people. You got to fucking chill out. You know, this is a horror podcast, so stop pushing me to talk about the weather. That was for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, so I think it might be that time. Oh, shit. Horror shots. All right, guys, so we're back, and today we're going to be doing kind of a combo shot. I don't know. It's kind of a loosey-goosey one, but it sounds delicious, and I'm sure it's strong as fuck. Uh, this week, we watched Madman, of course, and also Slaughterhouse. Now, this shot's called a Mad Mandarin Orange Shot, and yeah. uh, what is involved in this, I will break down for you. It's very tight butthole. <laughs> right. There's no loose buttholes around it. It's very tight. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. But yes, it's very tight butthole. So basically, since we're watching Mad Men, so we thought Mad Mandarin Orange, of course, that's the obvious part. But in this shot, you're going to be taking one half a shot of Mandarin Orange Vodka. You can find this pretty much anywhere. Yeah. Also, you're going to add a half a shot of Old Smoky Blue Flame Moonshine. Comes in those little uh, mason jars, you know? Yeah. You know, like they do out in that country out there. Yeah, it's not yeah. real moonshine, guys, but, you know, it, it'll go with it. Now, here's the kicker. You're also going to get a wedge of a blood orange, which are pretty... You can buy them at any of your grocery stores. And if you're lazy, just get a regular orange. Yeah, <laughs> if you're really lazy. But I think I think it's part of the blood orange that makes the real no, obvious sense. it has blood in it. Right. <laughs> well, there's, there's another reason for it, and I'll explain that to you here in a minute. But when you get this blood orange wedge, you're going to put some sugar on either side of it. Pick your sugar, whatever you want. Stevia, we accept. <laughs> put a little brown sugar on yeah. there. You know, that always goes good with everything. Whatever the hell you want. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, but part of the reason it's a double kind of for both movies is because. Entendre? No, it wouldn't be a double entendre. <laughs> So in in the Slaughterhouse movie, Pig Farmer had tried to do citrus fruits because he was guided to do so, and uh, it didn't do so well. So Because he, he didn't put his heart into it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? He didn't put his heart into it, man. man. So anyway, that is the shot this week. Um, it's a little bit of a two-parter, but it is kind of for Madman, so maybe I'll just say that. But. Right. We didn't bring shot glasses in here, and we don't have Sambuk. But, no, we don't have any Sambuk. But what I do is I got a little flasky over here. Yeah, he's got some tequila. And some we got tequila, yeah. We got the uh, champagne of bears, man. You know what I'm saying, man? <laughs> I don't know why I love doing that accent. I don't know. So he's got some tequila. I don't know what kind of. Oh, is. yeah. I don't even remember what kind it is. Cause uh, that's a bad sign. <laughs> it's spicy, though. <laughs> okay. It's going to make your nipples hard to, as a motherfucker. To, to a good episode, Patrick. Mm-hmm. Take a big I sound like Johnny Carson there. <laughs> it's going to be a really good show. Oh, boy. That's going to be a really good show. <laughs> Let's get our cards here. <laughs> <laughs> so if you... Oh. <laughs> kick it back Whoa, on you. I told you. Spicy. Boy, that had a back kick for like 10 seconds, dude. Like, <laughs> so if you would like to try a Mad Mandarin Orange, all you got to do is go to longlivedavoid.com and check out our hashtag horror shot section now. That's it for horror shots. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> so now we're going to go ahead and jump into our flesh and potatoes of Mad Men. And Slaughterhouse right now. All right, guys, so we're back. Now, of course, for those of you who are new here, maybe just stumbled upon us, we will always do our spoiler-free review first. 
Um, very occasionally do we ever Only break if that. We like, yeah, if we got a little bit of pre-cum coming out. Well, it just it depends. Happens. If we do, we will tell you before right. we do it. So you have no fears. But yes, <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Anyway, so it's going to be a great show. Uh, our first guest today is Madman. Hey. No. Hey. You know. <laughs> so the movie Madman came out in 1981. Uh, it is a story. A legendary psychopathic murderer stalks a summer camp. Sound familiar? Well, uh, there might be a reason for that. So you'll find out later, maybe. This movie was directed and written by Joe Gioni. Gionon, G- Gioni? I think so. Uh, this is pretty much the only thing he ever did, by the way. Uh, although he was an assistant director for a movie called The Clonus Horror, which I've never heard of. Neither have I, no. Interesting, though. Also, this was written by Gary Sales, who is actually mostly a second unit and assistant director on many different films and TV shows and such. Uh, he did Nicolas Cage's Vampire's Kiss, uh, that movie. He was a, a second unit. Hmm. Uh, he also did Miami Rhapsody, Harriet the Spy, which is like a kid's movie from the 90s, I believe. Oh, yeah, they had uh, Rosie O'Donnell in it, I believe. You might be right. Sounds, I remember it. Yeah. I just, I, it's, I don't, I never watched, I don't think I watched it. I don't know. Some of the cast in this movie, you have Galen Ross, who is Betsy uh, in this movie. She's an actress that has only done three things, but three big things. First off, she was Francine. Flyboy's girlfriend in the 1980s version of Dawn of the Dead, not the Ooh. remake, which, uh, you know, that's an iconic film to have under your resume, oh, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. She did this film, of course, next, and then Creepshow. Yeah, classics. Yeah. But she did stop acting after that and then uh, took on directing, actually, and she's done a lot of independent films like Killing Kastner, Beijing Spring, Title Shot, and Ximi. I think that's how you say it. Also in this movie is Tony Fish, otherwise known as TP from my bunghole. This is all he's ever done. <laughs> they used him once, threw him away. <laughs> like a prom dress. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. uh, also in this movie is Harriet Bass. Uh, she plays Stacy. She did An Empty Bed and this film. Seth Jones plays Dave. This was his first film. He did White Hot, Big Night, and But I'm a Cheerleader, which I didn't, I've never heard of that. Also stars Jan Claire, who plays Ellie, Baby Teeth Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> I probably shouldn't do that. No, I like it. Besides some small parts on, like, Gimme a Break, Third Rock, Star Trek Voyager, and King of Queens, she did some bit parts in those, and that was it. That's all she's ever mm. done. So, Also stars Alex Murphy, otherwise known as RoboCop. Uh, just kidding. His name's Bill in this movie. I was gonna be like, what? Are, I don't remember seeing him. <laughs> His name, uh, Alex Murphy, is the name of Robocop. Right. Yeah. I know, but I was like, I was automatically thinking, of what's his real name? Peter Weller? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just saw it and I was like, wait, that's Robocop. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he was in Killer and Third World and also stars Paul Ellers, who plays Madman Mars, who was in Static, Nowhere, Mary, Ink and Steel, and that's pretty much it. Hey. This movie had a budget of about 350k, so uh, it did take a while to make, uh, but they got it out. Patrick, what are your thoughts on this film? It was, you know, that classic kind of in gonna die in the woods kind of story. You know what I right, mean? It sure. felt like a Jason or Friday the Thirteenth. Sorry, no, they're not called Jasons. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like a Jason film because that's it probably is. well, technically, the first Friday the Thirteenth. You know, we know is the mom. Big surprise there, right? Obviously, but, yeah. it, it was inspired by that movie in particular, I think. Oh, for sure. And it definitely has a, a really cool 80s vibe. It's, uh, I like the way it starts. Okay. Um, the acting was, wasn't was terrible. I mean, some were better than others. Yeah, there were some bad parts from me. There was <laughs> definitely some bad parts. but It, it was I, like overacted almost. But. Yeah. But there was definitely some gems within the film. I like it. I would watch it again. I'm not sure if I'd buy it. Okay. It is on Prime, you know what I'm saying? I don't All think right. I like it as much. Well, you don't really collect DVDs, so. Well, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say it right now, but it, it's not one I would buy on Blu-ray. Okay. But it, it is a decent slasher, and I would I would definitely suggest people watch it. Uh, okay. What did you think about the kills? Kills? I, I thought some of the kills were like, I was wondering how many people were going to get decapitated. I was like, come on, you could be a little bit more 
<laughs> it seemed like there was like mix it up a little will mix you it up yeah there was three decapitation scenes already come on <laughs> it's something different well that's a spoiler right there yeah well oh uh, sorry put a little siren edit that in there <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about the music or the sounds and oh, the, stuff? oh yeah the music was good okay because um, it was all original stuff it wasn't yeah. like it wasn't any like i don't remember any band or anything except for the very no. end song maybe no, not even in the credits. Think. There was, was it there? wasn't. Oh no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Well, it technically was because back in the '80s, there was some movies that they would like actually write songs for some of the movies because okay. they thought it would like gain gain people's interest. And some of them, yeah, they were good. Like Doc and Dream Warriors. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Oh um, my god, yes. But this one well, it wasn't great. And I think it has like one verse in it, and then it just stops and it ends. <laughs> like it's like, uh oh, okay. I thought the song that one of the camp counselors sings at the beginning really sets up the movie perfectly. Oh, yeah. That was weird. It was weird, but for some reason, I really liked it. Okay. All right. <laughs> I know it was super cheesy, but I, I really liked it. Okay. What did you not like about it? Like I said, I didn't like that it, the decapitations were... So the kills just didn't strike you right? You didn't yeah, like Yeah, the kills weren't all that great. Okay. Some of the dialogue were that... So the actors had... or the characters had were really good for me at one point i don't see i can't even talk about it because i don't want to spoil it for people well you try not to try not to spoil it just talk about overall overall it, it, it has a really nice slasher feel to it okay like it's definitely classic slasher okay so what did you think about it alex well this is my first time seeing this guys and uh i remember the cover and everything you know, on the like VHS or beta rental shelf. I definitely remember seeing like people wearing the shirt and I don't know about the shirt because it's confusing because both this movie and Slaughterhouse have a very, very similar cover. Similar, but And it was easy to kind of mix them up for me in my little childhood brain. You know? <laughs> like so but anyway, I wasn't expecting much from it, but I actually like really like this film yeah like a lot like i love the feel the atmosphere the old crappy like synth hints are like you know i don't know how to explain it <laughs> yeah. it's just really synthy like weird shit uh when shit goes awry uh it, it's got a lot of tension and atmosphere to it which i was not expecting at all i was not even looking forward to these movies whatsoever so i was like yeah you know uh, whatever it's at least it's new right right but i think it had some nice shots the camera choreography in this one too i really liked i think this is a really well shot movie for such a sort of knockoff friday the 13th film you know, or the inspired kind of camp killer film. Yeah. You know, uh, I thought it had a very, like, super awesome sound design, like the kind that I wish I could see in movies these days. Like, personally, like, I just love those sounds. Like, that cheesy, fucking weird, shitty, synthy stuff. I don't know why, but it just it just adds this weird, eerie feel to it to me. The sound design just really, I liked it. The droning sounds that they accompanied when something bad was about to happen. Nobody was in a rush to get to the next scene, too, so the the scenes are like really long paced, which I actually prefer. And I kind of miss in some movies. Like, I feel like as cheesy and kind of fucked up as this movie is, like, the it's done in such a way that it's done better than most cheesy films. There's yeah, something more that. to it. Like, oh, yeah. for me, it's like they either needed to stretch it out because they needed to make it like an hour and a half, or it was like the right mixture of how to build tension. Mm. And I can't tell because it worked for me. Whatever it is, whether it was intentional or not, especially for an old film, like I said, for this kind of cow. Caliber, I just was not expecting that. You know, some of the acting makes me feel like it's a it's a bad white people stereotype, <laughs> like extremely bad. Like we don't talk to each other that way. Let me just confirm. Because <laughs> uh, seriously, that was some of the weirdest dialogue I've seen in a film, and I've seen plenty of fucking weird films. Like it is really weird. Uh, there's a lot of of the earlier dialogue that was like these folky sort of Shakespearean wannabe sort of thing going on with it. Like it's really hard to explain, but it's not natural conversation like and everybody's like talking this way which is even more concerning it's like what are you doing <laughs> like are you playing a play right now john like what the fuck are you doing and there's even one of the actors that says that in the movie and then it's like <laughs> i'm just joking uh, it's just really dramatic in the beginning so you're gonna be like what the fuck but there's not even a, a lot of gore in this film either but it does have some 
you know, just not the always happening, show you what everything that happened during the process kind of gore. It's more of an afterthought kind of thing, you know, so you see what happened afterwards, even though you won't see the axe go in someone's face or neck or body or whatever, you'll, you'll see the aftermath of all that, which is still pretty cool. Although there is one scene that I really like that, that does show it twice. I thought was pretty cool, but I'm not even a big slasher fan either. So, you know, while this movie sort of treats its main killer like a Sasquatch, which is what I felt like the whole movie (laughs) uh, with like obscene strength. Like it's like, I don't know if he's supernatural or what the fuck is going on here, but he's strong as a motherfucker, but it's still really well done. And I'd even go as far to say this is a super underrated slasher film, in my opinion, like where you weren't extremely excited about it. I was like actually very surprised. No, I was surprised i just out of the two we won't go there right now but well and there there wasn't a sequel for this film either which is kind of surprising because i felt like this one was actually pretty decent for that maybe it like tread too closely to the friday the 13th kind of thing and you know maybe the killer was too mute or the makeup was a little too hokey i'm not sure you know because it is all of those things are very true but it doesn't change the pacing and the tension for me like i shouldn't have felt that way with this 80s movie and i did Hmm. which is surprising so any of you madman fans out there fucking give a shout out in the comments i'd love to hear from you because i'm probably going to get hate for the next movie but it it is this movie is a little laughable at times i'm not trying to like say it's a perfect movie or anything like that and we were cracking up but there are some genuinely great moments i that i really really enjoyed and they even toy with those tropes that you think you know so well and then they push it further which i thought was pretty cool like there was one moment in the film i was like yes finally somebody did that you know like they've done it in other films but it just impressed me personally so i will definitely 100 percent be buying this in the future for sure i believe vinegar syndrome has it so i might have to get it i'd give it a seven or maybe an eight out of ten oh for an 80s movie especially so 80s slasher film i give it a seven well that's not a bad score at all like you said you wouldn't you'd watch it again but you're not sure you'd buy it i wouldn't buy it so i would think that that's closer to five or six right no i just i don't think i'd want to watch it again anytime soon but like it wouldn't be a movie i would never watch again you know what i mean like okay. i definitely give it another watch but okay all right yeah fair enough but yeah that's uh that's pretty much our spoiler free review right there i mean um we're probably gonna like we're gonna get into some pretty crazy trivia and stuff about the film that's pretty interesting so if you don't want to listen past this you probably won't uh but if you do come back whatever doesn't matter when you come back and listen to this uh we'll be here so um we're gonna jump into the trivia and shit right now now so this film was made in november 1980 at fish cove inn so they started shooting it in southampton long island during the production paul ellers the guy who plays madman mars and his wife they actually had been expecting their first child so gary the writer sales had supplied him with a beeper you know um And it says one night he is informed that she had gone into labor and rushed from the set to the hospital without changing out of character. (laughs) You know, upon arrival, he asked a nurse at reception where he could find his wife and believing that he had been in an accident. She tried to convince him to make his way to the emergency room. And uh, his son, Jonathan, uh, apparently was born on November 15th, 1980. So funny, huh? It's like crazy. Like in the middle of shooting, he just ran over. Yeah. So part of the reason that they made this film, I guess, was that in 1979, Joe Gioni and uh, Gary Sales, which I hope I'm pronouncing Joe's name right, they were hoping for a big break. And they began to toy with the idea of making their own feature. And they liked low budget horrors that like Toby Hooper did with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, which is notorious for having a low budget and able to make something. And uh, or also like John Carpenter's Halloween. So and they were getting big budget, you know, fucking money. So oh, yeah. or they oh, were yeah. getting big budget money from smaller budget films. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it was kind of a fad at that time. And uh, he decided they, they decided that they would follow through and begin discussing some sort of killer like that now i guess gianni and sales they met in richmond colin when they had created several short films which kind of like started their friendship and everything like that after seeing you know how big halloween got all the reception it got they were like okay i think this is time 
they discussed making their own sort of like boogeyman movie and looked at the options like Carpenter did with Halloween. Gioni and Sales realized that the easiest way to shoot a low budget feature was basically to base the story as in as few locations as possible. And uh, they found a urban legend of the Cropsy Maniac, which he had heard as a child and suggested a possible basis for their story. So they got really enthusiastic about it. And they started to develop the idea it would become Madman, the legend lives. And they even used his employer's facilities uh, to make a base of operations. So eight months and over a hundred attempts later, the project attracted attention on Sam Marion, who immediately sensed the potential when he witnessed the continuing success of Halloween as well. And other low budget thrillers such as Wes Craven's The Hills Have Eyes. So, by I guess by 1980, they secured enough financing to get into production f- for this film. And it was during that time that they had heard about Harvey Weinstein's The Burning, the 1981 film that was also featuring the Cropsy Maniac. So, because the two films resembled each other too much, they ended up canceling both of the projects that they were working on at the time. So, they decided to halt production on Madman, The Legend Lives, and rewrite the script. So, they rewrote it. And this is what we're dealing with today. So there was a lot of production stuff that was going on in the background, too, for this. Like, they were having a hard time, you know, finding places, like, getting money. They wanted to get in advance, which, you know, they used to rent out a space on in, in New York under the name The Legend Lives, I guess. And, like, it was just a... It was a pretty hectic fucking time but they ended up going to uh fish cove in southampton long island which basically with gave them everything that they needed in one location so i I just thought it was interesting to see kind of how that all came to fruition because it's all very valid for the time you know with everything that had been out and like everybody was inspired by i thought i thought it would be friday the 13th but surprisingly it was texas chainsaw massacre and fucking halloween and shit yeah so but you know come on it's a camp counselor so maybe he didn't want to mention friday the 13th (laughs) because he probably hears that shit all the time uh i probably would have heard that too you know fans like what the fuck yeah. But uh, just be thankful, by the way, Joe, that you're not living in today's times with uh, <laughs> with the Internet because you would have heard a lot more probably. Oh, yeah. Because everybody freaks out these days. Well, everybody's, you know, opinion matters. You know, Well, everybody's a critic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good or bad. They're all a critic. So another interesting tidbit on this is that because of the time they shot in Southampton, the crew basically had to paint the leaves of the trees and bushes what? Yeah, they paint. <laughs> yeah, they painted the fucking bushes green. Dude, that's some Looney Tune shit, right? right? <laughs> like because the film was supposed to be, it, it was being shot in the winter, but it was supposed to be set in warmer weather, so like the summer, so it was like really cold out. It's in New York, for Christ's sake, you know what I mean? Like in Jersey, you know what I'm saying? Fucking New York and shit, you know what I mean? Also, this movie was uh, one of the the video nasties in the UK. It uh, it passed uncut for the UK cinema by the BBFC, but they it brief they briefly seized this movie by the Hampshire police during the nineteen eighties video nasties thing. But it was later released fully uncut, you know, later on on D V D by Anchor Bay in two thousand two. So I thought it was interesting though, because that whole video nasties thing is really interesting. And we interviewed that a guy who put that together I can't think of his partner's name, but Jake West, who directed Evil Aliens and, and Matt and uh what was it, Doghouse? He uh, also did these video nasty movies for his company, which are really interesting stuff. If, if you get a chance, you should check it out. Um, I think uh, Severin owns them. Well, you just reminded me about Evil Aliens. And or I'm they like, distribute I'm going to have to watch fucking Evil Aliens. Again. Yeah, it's a fun movie, <laughs> it's you know. It's great. But uh, producer Gary Sales, who was also the writer, wrote the songs that are featured in the film, by the way. So he's the one that came up with that song at the very end. Oh, yeah? yeah. What about the beginning? I think it's the same song. Oh, yeah, it is the same song. Yeah, right? they just didn't use the, the, the words. They used some of them. Somebody else sang it, but I know he he made the music. Yeah. So, um, also Paul Ellers, who played Mad Mars, he said that there was a scene in the movie where he was like climbing a tree. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like a shadow in the tree. Apparently, during that, they had fake feet on his feet, so you could tell he was like <laughs> slipping around from the sweat and the fucking shit, you know. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Well, yeah, I know he had like Sasquatch feet, like I was fucking saying. <laughs> but yeah, he said it was like really hard not to fall out of the tree. 
And uh, so it was, I don't know, I thought that was kind of funny. By the way, did when you watch this movie, I got to ask you, and this is kind of like dipping into... Some uh, of the spoilers. Well, it's kind of in the beginning, but we're going to get into some of the scenes now, guys. So basically, we're going to break down some of the movies, some of the things that I thought was funny. Maybe he's going to mention that he thought was funny. Uh, but I wanted to ask you, like, so there's Max, the camp leader, who told the tale of Mad Mars, Madman Mars. And he also was the camp leader. And he talked like in ridiculous ways. Yeah, like he was from the like- Right. <laughs> Did he not seem like he was going to be the killer? Dude. Like, did you think he was? I totally thought that. Because he was okay. like, you know, I'm going to go play some cards or whatever. It's like, all right, so he's gone. I even said it to Christina, like, oh, it's totally him. Yeah. He's got the same build. Uh huh. But that was actually Frederick Newman. So he was a completely different person. But he had the same build as Paul Ellers, don't you think? I mean, I, I thought so. Oh, yeah. Dude, I, 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 that's funny that you said that because I thought that. I really, I literally did. Yeah, think but they that. have that phone call where he's like holding the money, and he's like, "Oh, I guess I should come back because there's blood everywhere." Or something. It was cards, I believe. <laughs> yeah, well, he was playing poker. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, so I think what we're going to do now is kind of get into some of the movie. There's some things that I want to mention that I just thought were really funny in the movie, and I like wrote. I always, whenever I'm watching a movie, I'll pause it. Uh, especially if it's an old film, I'll pause it in the middle of the movie and then like write down your thoughts, write down my thoughts. If I think something's like actually really funny. Um, but the whole movie starts out at a camp for children who are gifted, quote unquote. It starts off with like this guy singing about people getting murdered in this like fucking what medieval kind yeah. of <laughs> like it- there was a man who was inside the tree who was <laughs> like you Dude, liked it. That's I don't know does. why I liked it, but I liked it. It, okay sue me okay all right i mean hey whatever you like what you like you can't change it yeah, like you, you needed to like have one of those old school guitars what are they called yeah fucking uh i don't know a loot a loot yeah, yeah. <laughs> l-u-t-e yeah loot like have madman in the fucking, fucking jester hat or something <laughs> the guy freaked me out i didn't like him he kind of pissed me off a little bit like in the beginning i'm like okay it's just a camp you're not winning an oscar <laughs> See, I thought that set the movie up good. I mean, it is, but like, I don't know. It just thought it's just weird. And, and he as was, he's like talking about how they're dying and stuff, you like see flashes yeah. of his counselors. Yes, and they shows dying. each of them how they died. Right. I, I and I liked it. I liked I mean, it. that's cool, but I just didn't care for the song. Dude, it's gonna, you got to open your heart. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like the movie, so what the fuck? <laughs> anyway, I just thought he was singing around like an idiot, but it was definitely like a medieval kind of feel. Oh, yeah. Well, even the fucking, like, the counselor was talking like that shit, too. Like, he was fucking reading fucking, like, Shakespeare's. That's what I <laughs> That's what I was talking about, man. Like, I don't know what the fuck was wrong, what what kind of acid they were on, what kind of mushrooms they took. What but... was in the Kool-Aid? Just tell me. Yeah, I don't know. But the, the another camp goer man, who's Max, tells the story of Madman Mar. Marv's Marv? I thought it was Marv at first, but it's Mars. Yeah. Um, murdering his family and children, and then how Madman Mars went to a bar shortly after that and asked for a beer. As he placed his bloody axe onto the bar. Yeah. <laughs> and the townspeople stuck an axe into his head, apparently. Well, it like grazed his face. It like scarred like it Yeah, but they hung him too. Yeah. And then but but when they returned to check his body, because they just left him hanging there, I guess. It's so like, well, we better let it shit for a little while, you know? Like, wouldn't you just hang him and then take him down and right. like dispose of the body or something? They're like, no, it's kind of a nice ornament for the for the yard, I think. You know the part that I thought was kinda of asinine? It's like you're with a bunch of kids, right? And you're telling this scary story about this shit that supposedly happened, and then you shouldn't whisper his fucking name, or you shouldn't say his name above a whisper, and then he tells the fucking kid his name. And of course the kid's gonna be like... Well, hold on, before we get there, because when they returned, uh, his body wasn't there, nor were any of the bodies that he supposedly murdered of his family. Right. So everything was covered up, and nobody knew what happened to him. And like you were saying... If you say his name in the woods, he will kill everyone. Yeah. Above a whisper is what he like. He yeah. Said. It's like, all and right. he was like, his name is Madman Mars. <laughs> and then the other guy's like, Madman Mars, come and get me, bitch. <laughs> and he's like, he didn't mean it, Mars. Yeah, he's just a kid. Yeah. The medieval man fucking yells it out like a fucking dildo. Um, but yeah, it's. <laughs> And he chucks a rock, and somehow it goes through a window of Madman Mars' house, which is kind of silly, but it's also <laughs> kind of great. <laughs> so, I don't know. why the f- this, this is this part that, that blows my mind. They all decide to go back to the camp, right? 
Right. And one of the kids, Richie, decides to wander off to the Madman Mars house, which they don't know is his house, but he just goes, decides to wander off in the dark to some random house that's not even lit. What about the counselor? Did he notice that he wasn't fucking there? <laughs> well, he saw the creepy fucker in the tree. He saw Madman Mars in the tree. Right. And then he was like, huh, well, this might be a good time to wander off in the dark. <laughs> like, no, no. Just seemed like a bad idea. Yeah. All rifling through someone's random house, too. Like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing, kid? Like, hey, man, I like thrills and shit, too, but I ain't going to go wandering off in the middle of somewhere I don't know where I am into a house. And then, you know, you probably get lost and not even be able to find the camp. Like, what the fuck? Anyway, so Max, the camp leader, he's always rhyming and Shakespearean talking like I forget what he said. He was always like whispering some sort of wisdom and a bit of uh, a fetish for scaring children, I guess, because <laughs> they're like, why would you scare him? That was a little too much, Ma uh, Max. You know, you shouldn't scare the children. And he's like, oh, well, maybe next time next year, I won't scare them. The little ones can go elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, I'm going to go and do a jig or something. I don't know. But he's just very chummy. Um, did you? OK, so after he leaves, it's time for all the camp counselors to fucking get down, get down. <laughs> so fucking. I think it's Betsy and uh, that fucking TP guy who's like trying to Mac on her real hard. Yeah. And, like she's like, hey, buddy, I don't think I'm in the mood because he thinks he owns her. You know, that kind of move that, you know, like guys like, hey, what about me tonight? And she's like, <laughs> I'm not in the mood tonight. And then they have dinner together and he says some fucking magical words and suddenly her pants and clothes come flying off. Like, <laughs> like, really? <laughs> Like, and it wasn't even that good. It was, like, obviously, like, sh chummy. To, like, like, I'm sorry. That was a dick, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about earlier. I'm a well-placed individual and a fine, handsome man at that. <laughs> Who's going to fuck me? <laughs> well, it's going to be you, I guess, in the hot tub, nonetheless. Do you remember that whole scene in the hot tub? How they were, like, spinning around? You know, that was kind of like, it brought me back to my childhood because the first time I made out with a chick was in a hot tub like that. <laughs> Like that? It wasn't like that, no. That's pretty sorry. overly dramatic. No, like, it wasn't like, no. Did you circle the tub ten times and, like, dance? No, we were cir we were circling, though. We did, like, that's why it kind of, like, reminded me of that. Cause, oh. Like, we were, like, we weren't, like, spinning around like they were spinning around, but we were, like, walking around that edge that you sit on normally, just, we're like, walking with your hands kind of thing in the water. We, didn't they have that, like, song playing? It was like, tonight's the love. <laughs> like, on the radio, and it was, like, really long, like, ten minutes right. long, long. And, and I, you know, back to, sorry to cut you off. No, but, no you're good. Like, that, that whole makeout scene, like, I was scared to kiss her. Uh -oh. And the whole reason I was scared to kiss her is because I had just watched Species. <laughs> and I was just like, I, that just kept like the flashes That'll of do like it. her tongue like blessing out the back of his head. This kept going through my head. I was like, <laughs> I don't know why. They didn't uh, get the tongue split out the back of their head. No. So that's for sure. But I don't know. I just thought that scene was just so weird. It was just like. It everything felt like a play almost. Does it? You know what I mean? Like, like, like yeah, everything was like the curtain to drop and shit. Yeah, like, like act two. While I'm watching this movie, I'm thinking to myself, like, what the fuck is going? This is so weird. <laughs> there was a lot of dialogue in the movie, and and also to 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 boot, like you see, you know, Madman Mars like scurrying around in the woods and shit, like running really fast and like. <laughs> Like, like a Sasquatchy. Dude, the sounds that he made reminded me of the Toxic Avenger. Yeah, dude. Well, I don't know about that. I just thought of a Sasquatch. I didn't think of fucking that. Like, literally, I was like, woods? Dude, it was literally the same sounds. I swear to God. I don't know. I don't know about that. But so there's a there's a scene where um, Dave's all talking to all the other friends because they're all sitting there being like deep, I guess, because they were high. <laughs> They have and the their, way they were laying, yeah, it was they like had like head to head to head. To yeah, head. like like two people would like they would have head to head, and then the other person be laid the other way, and the other person be the other the lay way. So all of their ears were connected, and they could talk to each other <laughs> and and connect to nature. And so Dave, the fucking dark piece of shit that he is, dude, the shit that he says, though, my I'm like, god, dude. dude, I was like, he's like talking to like these other friends about like humans and their emotions and what make people rational or not and what makes them commit murder and shit like that. And he's like, he's all like, I can hide all your bodies and chop off your heads. And I was like, 
okay, Dave, this isn't really that fun. Like, you're just being weird. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all... Ro- and then he, like, jumps on him. He's like, I'm just kidding. And he, he jumps on him. And it's a big orgy. And they're all fucking each other's mouths and shit. <laughs> 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 they didn't really fuck each other's mouths. But it, it was a little... It did cut to the next scene to that. So we don't know. It was very theatrical, though, that part. <laughs> And it was really funny. Like, I just thought it was like the tones in this movie are a little all over the place in the beginning. Um, do you remember when TP gets hung? Yes. Yeah. Did you like that scene? I did. I like that scene, too. I actually like the scene before that. Well, in the first with the first kill with a guy who's drunk and he's like out in the front with his. Oh, he's drinking the Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels yeah. yeah. And he's like, I think it's time to go to bed. And the girl comes up to him and says, so he goes to bed. And it's like the qu- just like how quick it happens. Just rips his throat out. It's, yeah. It's flat. <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i was like okay so there's some gore that's cool like yeah. that was the first kill it wasn't a, it wasn't anything special for me i i personally thought that the the one of the more i mean there's a couple of standout kills in this movie but i just love the length of the the hanging part where they like hang that tp guy because one i wasn't too fond of him to begin with right he's doing medievally weird songs first of all no offense to anybody that loves medieval he's songs. an artist but he's just freaky looking and he kind of scares me and i did <laughs> Is he going to touch your pee-pee? So it was like, he gets hung, and and something that I... This is the part that I was talking about, that they did something that I really appreciated, is that normally when people hang, they're just like, oh my God, what do I do? I just die. Right. And he's... He's like a fighter, so he fucking grabs the rope, pulls himself up with his strength, and grabs the tree branch, and like... Starts to get the fucking thing off of his neck and he can breathe again. And then Madman Mars comes all Sasquatchy up to him. Dude, pull- and the look on his face of a relief. He's like kind of, almost kind of laughing to right. himself. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> I was. I mean, I thought that was a really cool, genuinely unique thing that you see in a, you see in a movie. And like, but, you know, they even like foreshadow because they show his belt that says TP. Yeah. So it was almost like saying this, this, this belt's going to be the cause of your death. A lot of foreshadowing in this, I think, but he, so basically Madman Mars pulls on his belt and cracks his neck and, uh, bye bye, TP. No more TP for my bunghole. <laughs> but Mars goes all grunting off into the, in the night. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what the fuck he was doing and why he couldn't talk. Maybe because he got hung and he couldn't use his vocal cords or something. I- I don't know what that is. Um, but Dave, the fucking dark piece of shit that started the orgy, uh, is all looking for TP, and Dave bumps into TP's dangling corpse, dodging Madman Mars's axe chops, which is kind of cool action scene, I guess you could yeah, say. Yeah, it was all right. Um, he, like, dodges every single one of them until the final successful blow, and they cut, in which the camera cuts, but we do get to see his headless corpse a little bit later, and, like... That was pretty cool. I liked his little headlight course later, but it did make me laugh Um, because she sees his legs. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, she's like, Dave, what are you doing? And she's like, pulls on his feet and he stands up and his head's gone. <laughs> we were laughing about that. I posted it on Instagram in our stories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on BTV's Instagram. So I was like, we were cracking up. Um, She's like, are you hurt? And I was like, oh, no, honey, he's a lot more than hurt. He's headless. Um, I don't know. It's funny. I I believe there was some blood squirting or dangle or dripping out of his neck. Well, yeah, a little bit of blood you see on her sweater and shit. Yeah. And she runs to the truck for that age old horror trope of the truck won't start, which is in so many fucking horror movies. It's ridiculous. It's like it's happened so many times in horror movies that even when they trick you and, and it does start. Like, and then it happens again. It's like, oh, come on, man. Like, I believe it with an old truck, though. But a newer car these days, never going to happen. No. But she pops the hood of the the yellow truck and it won't start. So she starts looking around because she knows he's chasing after her or something. And like Mars is behind the truck as she's like under the hood looking to fix things with a screwdriver, by the way. And Mars jumps on top of the truck. His big old Sasquatchy ass is on top of the truck without shaking and moving it, by the way. (laughs) And then he jumps on the hood, decapitating her, which was fucking awesome. Like it wasn't. It, you didn't really see that much, but you just hear like her head's like off, and you see. I think the body falls over. Or yeah, something. like kind of like drags down the front of it as her neck hole is bleeding on everything. <laughs> on the front of the hood, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like on the front in the in the in the, the license plate. And yeah, shit. which was pretty cool. Um, 
And of course, you know, Bill and Ellie stumble upon the truck and try to start it, and it's a no go. But you hear the squish when it turns. Did you hear that? It was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's a nice touch. But I don't think it would do that. But it was kind of funny. Um, well, it's cool because when they opened up the trunk or the hood, you could see where the fan went into her neck. And where right, they, it showed it a possible sound and her face. I think right. too. Yeah. But they, you know, they, they, they see the head and he grabs it in a towel or something. <laughs> like, I gotta wrap this up. He's like, we gotta get out of here. Let me grab the head real quick. And I don't know what he does with it. Like, you just take that motherfucker and chuck it, dude. What are you worried about wrapping it up in the towel for? Right. And then because he did that, he gets yanked out of the car or the truck window. And like, it fucking, he just gets pulled out and Ellie's all screaming and freaking out. And her, something about her acting a little bit was just like, really weird or something i don't know if it was like i just wasn't into her part it so, was her, weird. so her death was kind of like kind yeah. of nice <laughs> yeah like you just wanted her to die <laughs> i know that sounds shitty but like i kind of did like yeah she go continue on because it's the worst how, part first of all out. how the fuck do you yank a dude out of a goddamn window like that break the window yank a dude out like that like he's just like bad man mars man yeah i know he's a sasquatch yeah. so he just got that sasquatch strength you know what i'm saying <laughs> that sam squanch yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well she gets out ellie the girl who christina calls baby teeth by the way yeah, she's like the polar opposite of that girl who was an evil dead too oh yeah kind of fucking coward she got like the big ass piranha teeth but she gets back to the camp and uh, Mars comes from behind her, breaking the door and she that she locks, which I like. That was another thing. It's like usually when they lock the door, it's never like, boom, kick the door in. <laughs> it's like, it, I'm going to go to the back door. Yeah, he like kicked that door. He kicked another door down and she hit in a refrigerator and is like, you know, she dumps everything out on the floor in the kitchen and then hides in there. I'm like, well, wouldn't you see that? Right. <laughs> That's exactly what I That's thought. That's what Christina was saying, too. So, but I mean, whatever, you know, maybe he's just, you know, got a bung, like a, a shit eye and he didn't see all the shit on the ground. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. It, it was funny nonetheless, but she gets out and this, one of my favorite things was, is that Betsy calls Max, the camp counselor. He was out playing poker and left the kids by themselves to take care of the camp kids. And, uh, he's out playing. He's got all his money in his hand. She's like, there's blood everywhere. Uh, you need to get here. And she loads. Uh, this is Betsy's the fucking blonde. But like right before this, I forgot to mention Ellie does get axed or sliced in the chest. But the stupidest part is she, when she came back to the camp looking for her. Yeah. The way she was doing it. What was her name again? The girl she was looking for? Betsy, the blonde hair, the chick from uh, yeah. Dawn of the Dead. She just kept reaching out in front of her. Like, Betsy. Eh, Betsy. Betsy. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. kill her now. <laughs> well, I, I thought I, I did like Ellie's death a little bit. It was like one of the more glorious kills, I thought. Yeah, for sure. Um, that you got to see because they, they usually cut away at this point from everything else for the most part. Except for the headless hood girl, you know. Um, but anyway, Betsy calls Max. He's on his way out. She loads the double barrel and heads to the main cabin. And it looks like in the like in the window, you can see Ellie, and she's somehow pushed up against the window to scare Betsy. And she <laughs> just fires that fucking shotgun right into her face, and she's like, <laughs> all of her little baby teeth went everywhere. <laughs> Them baby chicklins are going everywhere. <laughs> it's like that. So this is where the movie's like really picked up a little bit more, you know, like obviously like now we're on a cadence and it's like full on third act swing, you know. Betsy grabs all the kids in the and gets them in a bus and Mars runs in front of the bus as she's driving away and she stops. Like I would have just been like fuck you bitch, boom. Like what's he going to do? Stop it? Right. She likes she was like, "Oh my god, it's Sasquatch." And she stopped. <laughs> But uh, he, he, like, tries to get into the bus, and he's, like, sticks his hand through the, like, doors. Because you know how a bus is open, and they, like, fold. And he's, like, sticking his hand through. And she's all hitting it with, like, a pipe or something. Isn't that what it was? I think it was a pipe, yeah. And she just, like, even when his hand's It was a even, bat. Was it a bat? I think it was a bat, yeah. Because well, one of the case, kids grabs like, a bat. She's, like, swinging, swinging, swinging. And even when he pulls her fucking hand out, she's still got that fucking motion going. She's just like, whatever. I'm just swinging at nothing now. I don't even care. She's scared, man. <laughs> fucking Sasquatch is trying to get her, dude. Damn, Sam and Squanch. He, I remember him moaning like a weirdo. Like, I can't. I don't even remember what it sounded like. Maybe he got was... his rocks off or something. <laughs> 
But she, instead of leaving with the kids, she sees that, you know, Mars is carrying somebody out of a out, out of the building. I think it's Ellie. And she's like, Ellie. And she she goes after him. And uh, she's like, I need to find the others. And she tells the bigger kid to, like, drive off to the police station as if he knows where the fuck he's going. You know what I mean? And, and as uh, as she hunts down the others, um, old Mars house, basically, the Richie kid, which we forgot about, is there. And he's, he's like, collecting dead bodies, I guess. You remember that? Yeah. Like, he's, like, Richie's, like, navigating around the killer somehow. He's, like, the only one wandering out in the woods, and Mars can't even find him. He's just, like, completely oblivious. And how the fuck did he not find his way back to camp? I don't un- I don't know what the fuck the kid was doing. Like it- it- hours had passed. Like what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> like e- even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while, right? I guess, but I don't know. I thought it was really weird, but he like there was that scene where he like opened his mouth and he was like, "Oh my god." And then it cuts to something else. I thought that was funny. She goes back to the house, Betsy, the main star, uh the final girl. She gets like smack cut, like he smacks her across the face or something, and it cuts her face. No, it wasn't uh, it. No, he like she tried to shoot him, missed, and then he like knocks the shotgun out of his hand with the axe, and then drops the axe and cuts and smacks her. her. Yeah, but that's what cut her face is his right. long ass dangling fingernails or whatever <laughs> fucking his cut sasquatchy her face. fingers. Yeah. <laughs> And that looked cool because you could see part of her cheekbone and shit. It looked cool. Okay. Well, I thought it was funny because I've seen other... We watched a movie, The Mexican Slashers, that we last watched. And this guy just kept slapping people. And, like, (laughs) it was called The Cemetery of Terror. And he kept slapping people. And it would just cut them. I'm like, what the fuck? And he didn't even... I don't know. It was just weird. He drags her down to the body basement. And she gets hung on a hook. Like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. She stabs him in the back somehow, and he ends up burning up the whole place by accidentally knocking a candle over and some hay or something, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. There's always some hay laying around, you know? But when I mean, you got a body basement, you got to get some hay. Yeah, you got to soak up that blood somehow, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It's like sawdust shit. But that's when uh, Max, the camp leader, finally shows up, and he's driving down the street to the camp, and he sees Richie, uh, the one that's been poking around, you know? And is on the road, and he's like, "What's wrong, Richie?" You know, he's like, "He's like Madman, Madman Mars. He's real. He's real." <laughs> the Madman Mars theme song kicks off. You know, he's a mammal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the eighties. <80s. laughs> uh, That's pretty cool, though. I, you know, I make fun of it, but I still really enjoyed it. Like, yeah, it definitely had a nice tone. There to was it. some tension to it, and I, I just, I don't know. There's something about it that I really, really admire. You know, I may make fun of it in the fucking spoilers here a little bit, but, you know, it's an old movie, but I still find some very redeeming value in it. Oh, for sure. And I think if you haven't seen any this slasher, or and I, I would say this is more of a slasher than the next film, uh, to me, because it's, it's done in the true slasher style uh, more than the other one. But yeah, check it out, guys. I don't know. See what you think. Um, but if you are a fan of it, let me know, motherfuckers, because I love you. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like, you're a piece of shit. We do have another movie that Patrick did, so why don't you go ahead and kick that off? So the next film we're going to be talking about is uh, 1987's Slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse. <laughs> Which has a really cool fucking end theme song, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very metal for the 80s, yeah, right? We'll, we'll like, talk about that. Metal. It's not supposed to be that. I'll, I'll tell you more about that. So we're talking about Slaughterhouse, a.k.a. Bacon Bits, yeah. a.k.a. The Pig Farm Massacre. Yeah. Well, those are only names it goes by. Unless Slaughterhouse is what I've always known it as. Right. Um. So the lo- the owner of a local slaughterhouse is facing f- foreclosure on his property. Mm-hmm. And some of the other bigger guys who have a slaughterhouse who have previously worked for this gentleman in the past want to buy his slaughterhouse to make a bigger operation. One of them is because he's got a grudge against them. The other one Wait, just speak to make money. Right. Yeah. So obviously he doesn't want to take the deal. He wants to keep his house, whatever. And then they're gonna fo- so the city's gonna foreclose on him instead of taking this deal from this other bigger slaughterhouse. Right, mechanized. Yeah, make it. We do stuff by hand. I told you to go mechanized. <laughs> you told me to goddamn citrus fruit trees. Anyway, go ahead. 
And I, and I just love... Wait, wait, wait. We're not getting into that yet. All I'm right. sorry. We went too far anyway. Yeah, we did. So the son exacts revenge. Yeah. Bigger bone son who yeah. uh, is not a, as educated as most people. Oh, he, he carries the attributes of a pig, pretty it, much. Yeah, pretty much. Like, at, to the T. They meant it to be that way. Right. Right. He's very... He, he doesn't know shit about shit. Right. Except for... Uh, how to how to cut people up but yeah he he sends him to exact his revenge right and that's the whole story pretty much so it is we're done story. thanks for coming by guys all right peace <laughs> <laughs> so who directed this film patrick all right so this movie was written and directed by rick rosler uh and this is pretty much this is it okay yeah i mean i mean these are smaller movies you yeah know? for sure this one seems like it had a bigger budget than the other one though it actually didn't really a hundred and ten thousand dollars oh okay wow so and I guess what he they did, a did good job then. yeah, what they did with that budget, phenomenal. Right. Okay. Fair enough. So our cast here, Joe B. Burton, who plays Buddy Bacon, the son, mm-hmm. who's also known for 1987 Blood Diner. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. And 1987 Sledgehammer. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Don Barrett as Lester Bacon, which I thought was fucking amazing that they were name is Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. it's so spot on the, 80s it's ridiculous yeah that's nobody's last name uh, by the way they yeah. were the ones that invented bacon yeah. <laughs> but he's also known for 1988's uh hobgoblins and uh 1989's desperation rising okay and we got william oh wait wait was he the uh oh yeah that's why i've recognized him because we did hobgoblins not too long ago me and uh, Brittany. Brittany, yeah. I was going to say, I didn't watch it, but yeah, I never saw Hobgoblins, and now I want to see it because he did a really good job in this film. Okay. Uh, we also have William Hoke as Sheriff Borden, known for the abominable snowman and speak of the devil. Okay. <laughs> he didn't do much. We also have Sherry Lee, who will play Lizzie Liz- Borden. Lizzie Borden, yeah. Yeah, which I'm like, why did they pick that name? Right. And I thought they were going to make a nod to it in the movie, but they didn't. They did not. Yeah, because Lizzie Borden's the axe murderer fucking thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was weird. I don't know why they picked that, but anyway. She was also known from 1989's Born Killer and 1990's Demon Wind. Oh, yeah. That's where she's from. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. That's a So Bad It's Good movie. It is. It, it really is. is. We and watched that, remember? The credits are the shit, dude. Dude, I will never forget that movie when the guy does a magic trick and kicks the can at the guy's head. <laughs> like, what the fuck was... Ju- what just happened? Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's uh, good. That's good. You know how to Wait, hold on. Let me get to this next one just because I liked it. Uh, and we also have uh, Jeff Wright as Deputy Dave. Oh, yeah. Now, he hasn't done much. Yeah, this bit parts here and there. 1988's The Naked Gun. Uh, uh, oh! He did two Naked Gun, actually, and they're both bit parts, but he actually helped write them. And another movie he helped write, which is one of my favorite sort of comedies, is Basketball. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. But we're going to move forward I was kind here. of annoyed by his character in this movie, by the way. We're, yeah. Yeah. It was, but his kill scene? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. So what did you think about this movie, Alex? Well, I haven't seen this since I was probably like really young. I don't, in fact, like I mentioned before, I, I don't really remember anything about it. Right. Um, so after seeing Madman, I was actually pretty stoked to see this. Cause like when you originally, cause I gave Patrick like three different double movie tr- picks. I said, you pick. And then he was like, let's do these ones. I was like, fuck. I was like, I want to watch these other ones, <laughs> motherfucker. Um, well, the main reason I picked those is because they are on Prime. Right. Well, I could have found you those movies, though. No problem. Or you could have watched them with me. So just for future reference. All right. Well, next time we get the circle jerk going. But, right. Yeah. Both of these movies are on Prime, by the way, guys. So you can watch them there. Um, but I-, I was pretty stoked to see this one after watching Mad Men because I really did enjoy it so much. I was, like, really surprised by it. However, this was a very different experience for me. Shell. Really? Yeah. Dude. I know. Really? I'm sorry, man. I just wasn't, you know, I, I I think it's a fun movie, minus one section in the film that I wasn't too hot about, and that was where they fucking show the process of killing a pig, which I'm sorry, but like, I understand it's an old film. I don't hold it against it. No, it's it. pretty brutal. It was almost like- I just don't like watching animals right. in agony. It was almost like faces of death quality. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, yeah. like, I get it. Like, some people have a stomach for it. I'm just a big animal lover, and it was a, it was a tough 
watch. It definitely made me uneasy at that part, but I still like I tried to push through it. So for those of you who are not fans of that kind of stuff and you want to skip over it, they don't get back into that territory. So you don't have to worry about right. it. So you can skip to the 10 minute, 30 second mark, just so you know. <laughs> so if you start seeing the pigs like in the weird, quirky fucking song, just fast forward it to that mark and you'll be good. OK, just a heads up. But um, like I said, I, it didn't stop me from enjoying the movie. It's more of a thing I just don't want to see personally. You yeah. know what I mean? But it didn't, it didn't, that didn't affect how I thought of the film because of that. I just want to be clear so people don't go, Oh, you just didn't like that. You know, like whatever. <laughs> but you know, Slaughterhouse to me really didn't bring the goods that I had hoped for personally. I know that it, this is a fan favorite of a lot of people I know. And that disappointed me even more because I wanted to like it as much as some of my friends like it. But. I don't know. The characters take a little little while to get into for me. Like like weird is fine. That's better than boring and unrecognizable. Cuz like the characters in this movie other than the main Well that that's my kind of thought is like I don't give like I didn't give a fuck about any of the characters. The only one that actually meant shit to me was the farmer and his son. Right. Well, I it's not that I needed to like have this like intimate moment or, you know, whatever. What I, I expected in an 80s movie, but it's still they were just like kind of background fodder in the very beginning of the movie, which is not supposed to happen. It's supposed to introduce the characters and it just felt like they were just like side canon. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like they, I agree with that. They focused on a lot of characters that, you know, that matter too, but I don't know, just the kids didn't affect me. So I'll get into that. But, you know, I don't think it really matters in a film like this, but I did note it because it was just something I kept thinking about. I was like, okay, so who are these kids? Like, what's going on? Like, they're not very likable, but they do have a scene where they kind of make you kind of get into the like 80s style, bro. Um, but I don't know. It is a silly movie after all with, a, you know, a lot of heavy tropes thrown in. It's, it's really a movie to celebrate the killer, I think, more than anything. Yeah. So it's not like in the shadows, there's this guy walking around. It's more like, hey, Hey, diddly doo, diddly doo, diddly doo, kill. Hey, diddly 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 doo. Like some fucking country music playing in the background. Or some fucking, they had like some rockabilly or punk rock music, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it just depends on whether or not you like this character who's the killer, this buddy guy, if you're going to really enjoy it. They call him Buddy Boy. His dad does anyway. He's like a large mute guy who oinks at you and pets his pigs like a puppy, which was a little odd, but, you know, it made sense. He's this weird, deranged guy. Um, it was a good thing. I'm just saying, like, he definitely sells the not all there childlike redneck guy, which was, he did a good job, I think, as a deranged kind of killer. But it felt like he was more of like a child going around killing people. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like in a thousand main or house of a thousand corpses. Like tiny. Or tiny. Yeah. Right. But, but not as like a great, like I wasn't scared by him by any means. It's like, like I said, he just kind of reminded me of a child that decided one day to have fun with killing somebody uh, in some, uh, you know, sort of mindless killer amuses himself a lot with a lot of like a log of human shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> like he's like, doo, 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 hello, Mr. Turd. You know, like he, except he doesn't speak, by the way. He's just grunts, which is very in common with both of these films. Right. Mm -hmm. Both the killers grunt and shit. Right. Well, he, he more he oinks like a pig. Right. But he also grunts, too. Yeah. Like he's just like, <laughs> like, I don't know how to explain it, but the gore in this one is actually pretty mild. Um, more of like a splashing of blood kind of thing than showing it. Although there were one or two scenes that was kind of great. Uh, it's not like super practical effects movie or anything. It's more of like, you know, there was that one scene where the guy gets cracked in the head. I won't explain that, but we'll talk about it in the spoiler section. But I feel like it's a kind of like just a very straightforward killer movie uh, with a father who's not happy about losing his farm and buddy his son. He doesn't like it when you mess with his pigs. So if you kind of like sort of like the killers on the loose film with like dumb kids who can't stay away from places they shouldn't keep going to, this is probably the perfect movie for you <laughs> because these kids just keep going back and it doesn't make any goddamn <laughs> sense. Uh, I just felt. I don't know. Maybe it was just felt a little too straightforward for me compared to the other one, which felt a little bit more atmospheric and tension. Uh, it just didn't fit that groove. So I wonder how I would feel if I would have seen this one first before watching the other one. But I always like to watch it in chronological order, like when they came out, because it gives me kind of a basis, um, you know, what came out first. So I don't know. But 
I maybe because I saw Madman first, it kind of changed. I enjoyed that vibe so much. I kind of wanted to see more. I don't know. I know a lot of my friends really do enjoy this film and it's a lot of fun. And it is. It is fun. Like I had fun, but I wasn't like eagerly awaiting everything. It all flows like a big like a movie that it feels like a bigger budget than it is. You know what I mean? Obviously. So he did very well, like you mentioned with the money, but it just didn't, I don't know. It just didn't satiate what I was looking for. And I don't know. I thought it was just a movie that was kind of a slightly above average for me. I'd probably say I'd give this like a five or a six, probably like 5.5 or six. Yeah. So I'm not sure if I'd want to see it again anytime soon, but maybe one day I'll add it to my collection. You know, something yeah. that I would have just for the sake of having it. But it is above average slightly. But in the bigger scheme of the 80s, I've seen much better Texas Chainsaw sort of wannabe movies. So I felt like it kind of was a little flawed. Well, that's exactly what I thought. Exactly what you just said. Yeah, like this one, like Madman was more of a trope on, you know, Friday the 13th. And but it got an more inspiration. of a trope yeah. of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Right. Well, they both did, technically. Yeah. Well, we was some of the death scenes and like the meat hooks and whatever. Right. But this one just had was more in the main vein of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Definitely. Yeah. Like, I mean, I just, it's just, which they did a good job with the dad and the, the son. Like, I thought that it was enjoyable. It just wasn't as dark. It was too silly for me to, to really, I don't know. And it wasn't the, the funny, 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 silly kind of fun for me. Like, there was some parts that I was like, ah, oh, that's fun, you know, but, it just didn't like grab me and like make me crack up at some like ridiculousness. But I don't know. What did you think? I'm on the totally opposite end of the spectrum. Okay. Like I fucking love this movie. <laughs> this movie is definitely have become part of one of my top ten. Top ten movies of all time. Of what to talk about horror genre. This this in the horror. Really? Dude, you think this is? The I top had a 10? lot of fun watching. Okay, this Okay. Well, I'm glad you did, but I'm just surprised by that, dude. It it. it oh. Like you, like there was definitely some good music in it. Like you maybe didn't notice it. Maybe you go back and watch. I it I could name ten movies right now that would beat it right now, and you would be like, "Yep, yep, 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 yep." yep There's yep, no yep. way, dude. It's good. Maybe not my top ten, but it's definitely in there. Okay, it, it's, it's, it's it's definitely a good. I don't know if you call it a slasher film. Or, I, I don't know. know. That's what I'm saying. Like it's not a normal slasher film. Like typically you would have like with Madman where they're like hiding behind shit, shadowy people behind right. the lens, going after people. This guy's just more balls to the wall. Yeah, he, like, it's just more. A and movie. I think that's what I liked about it. Yeah, it's a movie about just him. Didn't give a fuck. Right. Okay. Or he didn't have the right sense to even know. I don't know. Like they didn't wrong with give it. a fuck. Had a lot of funny scenes in it. Definitely had that '80s cool vibe to it. Okay. The music, a lot of the music was really good. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, they had, like, soundtrack music, like, right. actual, like, cuts well, from real people. I think most of all the music was done by a band called Vantage Point. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that one song at the party just made me crack up. <laughs> or no, when they were shooting the horror video and they were doing the montage. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. We got to talk about that shit, because I was laughing my ass off, like, the words. Yeah, it was a little ridiculous. But I mean, that's I mean, don't expect something serious when you're going into this movie. Of course, not. take it for what it is. Neither of the films, really. And uh, I mean, it was just ugh, so much fun, dude. Okay. Like I can't say enough about. So, how is there much anything you was. didn't like about the film? What would you give it a score of? I would say like I kind of wasn't enjoying the film, f- probably through like until they killed the 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 sheriff, and then like okay. that's where it really picked up steam for me, and I was like, all right. I'm fucking in now. This is fucking good. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you're wrong, but no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> yeah, I would say about like, yeah, the first 20, it took me like 20, 25 minutes to get into this movie. And then once I was in, I was like, all right, I'm strapped in now. All right. Wow. It was good. <sighs> wow. Yeah, I can't believe you didn't like it. Like, It's oh. not that I didn't like it. I, li- I, I would watch. Li- right. I, I, I just feel like it's probably more of a 5.5 movie for me compared to other films that I've seen in this vein. Entertainment wise, it does have entertainment value and it is worth watching again. I just I just expected more 8. from 5 it. 8.5 for me. 8.5. 8.5. Huh. And I will be picking this up on Blu-ray. Well, Vinegar Cinder, buddy. Yeah. I think it's like 25 or 20 $25 with shipping. Oh, dude, I already looked it up. Okay. <laughs> I think it's on my wish list ah. right now. Like. Well, this is good. I'm kind of glad that you liked it more than me, and I didn't, and I like Mad Men more than you. 
Yeah, I mean, if you had to compare the two, you said the other one was seven. Yeah, seven. Hmm. You seemed like you didn't like it as much, though. Like, I feel like that number is lower. Like, you would be like I am almost. Well, let's maybe we'll go to six point five then. Okay, six point five. Well, you don't have to lower it. I'm just saying, like the way you described it. Because he kind of spoiled it a little bit. We spoiled it for each other a little bit um, right. outside because we just can't. We're frothing at the mouth to talk <laughs> about it. Because at first he's like, I love Slaughterhouse. And I was like, oh, I love Madman more. And that's what started. They kind of like, <laughs> like, what? <laughs> he's like, what? You didn't like Slaughterhouse? Well, because I was like, I came here. I was like, I know why you wanted me to do the notes on Slaughterhouse. Not, I, I had no idea what the movie I was going to be I like. I thought you just wanted to bust your nut first. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not like, at all. But yeah, no, it's a fucking awesome movie. And I anybody who likes that 80s genre or like just getting into it, definitely recommend it to you. Okay. Check it Sweet. out. Sweet. Well, I thought the covers of these looked very similar. Oh, yeah, for Even sure. Even though the, the movies are completely different, totally different stories, totally different. Well, they're kind of like big guys, but it's like Madman is standing in a doorway, a glowing doorway. Slaughterhouse standing in a glowing doorway it's <laughs> like they really look very similar yeah. so it's like it's almost like they took a took a bite of that movie somehow it was inspired a little bit by but you did the trivia on this you want to jump into the spoiler section now all right here we go sound that shit beep, beep, beep. that's all we do for these ones <laughs> it's only the new movies because the new movies is where everybody gets upset about well apparently there was a, a sequel in the works that they never got to hmm. okay he had finished the script and I guess the last time they touched base on them was uh it was the director and the producer and it was in uh two twenty uh yeah twenty seventeen huh okay and they said they were gonna do like either do an updated version of the original slaughterhouse or continue the script that he wrote for the second slaughterhouse that mm-hmm. or completely do a whole new film altogether and these guys haven't done anything since like I said before like this so it's just was like a, one... like we should do something again right before we die <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the movie they were working on didn't really sound that cool to me. It was called Predators. It's a a zombie story set in the remote mountains of Goblin Valley, Utah. I wonder. I mean, that's so such a brand new idea. Yeah, <laughs> like, I think we're, everybody's over the zombies by now. I mean, yeah, like, and that's what Marvel's going to be like. All those fucking superhero movies that keep saying it. They're the new zombies. I but, mean, it's not that they're overrated. I I have very good zombie oh films. there's definitely great zombie films out there yeah i mean i don't want you guys to think for a second that i don't love zombies i do but i've just it's like i've seen every type of zombie film that you can imagine at this yeah. point and it's like every now and then one sneaks through that's a little bit more original than the others and most of the times when you see these zombie films you're like okay yeah let's go for a ride i don't mind i know what to expect like the dead don't die yeah like like i always say like when you watch these when you watch zombie movies you always like to watch when hell breaks loose like that's when it's like yeah you know that's the bet the rush you know that rush so but anyway go ahead also uh many of the crew members that are named in the credits yeah were fake names <laughs> they seated them in the end of the credits to make it seem like it had it was a higher budget movie than it was weird right yeah <laughs> Uh, but I mean, like I said before, I, I I'm gonna say it one more time: a hundred and ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, no, that's that's. And, and once you see this movie, you'd be like, "Well, really?" They did make it work. They made well, it work. It's not a bad movie. That's why I say. You know, I don't have anything. And apparently, uh, Burton, it was only five nine. So a lot of the scenes, they tried to put him on something higher, like a like a ramp or something standing, uh, to make him seem like he was more taller and like menacing. a hulking beast, right? Yeah, which he uh, or have him sit down to make it look like so you couldn't tell, right? Yeah, and the police car they used in this film was an actual police car that they bought in auction. Oh, like okay, five hundred bucks. That's like half your budget right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh my god! Well, it's not half your budget. It's no. not a thousand dollar movie, right? That's a micro budget. But um, so like the the slaughterhouse that they filmed in, they didn't really have to do any kind of like prop design or make it look dilapidated. Everything was already there, mm. which is that's pretty cool. Yeah, sure. I mean, fucking save some money you know what I'm oh saying? yeah i guess uh joby burton the guy who plays buddy right actually did a promotional tour of the slaughterhouse when the movie was coming out okay <laughs> and like he did stuff for the radio some grassroots shit right? right and he yeah. did stuff for the radios and i think he just mostly grunted and shit on the the interviews yeah he like never he talked does, in it right yeah i mean that's pretty cool i wish they would do shit like that nowadays but i mean i guess you really can't 
No, you can. There are people who do it. They tour all the time. You know, do uh do like a like a interview thing and like festivals and stuff. It's just yeah. it's just not a like a public thing. Like it's not as much grassroots as it, that would have been. Right. I mean that's a lot of work. Uh, so. Movie was shot in uh twenty one days. Wow. Okay. It's pretty, pretty average. Yeah. From what they pulled off, I I really like I said, I, I really enjoyed the shit out of this. So the dog food the guy was eating was really just refried beans they put into a dog food can. I mean, it's not very interesting. I kind of assumed because yeah. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, mm, I bet he's not eating real dog food. Right. That's a little bit. I mean, some some actors do. Like, like I think, what's his they name? They got to commit. What was it? The the slums, not slums of Beverly Hills. What was it called? That guy, I can't remember. Nick Nolte, was it? He did that that. Beverly Hills, where he was homeless. Oh, and, yeah, 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 yeah. And he was eating the dog food. I can't remember the name. <laughs> if you guys know it, like, sound off. He was really eating dog food? I think he really did at that movie. Oh, yeah. Man. I can't recall 100%, but uh, quote me wrong, whatever. I don't care. Oh, man. Oh, this, this film was apparently uh, cut and uh, put together again in the director's garage, which yeah. is cool. I mean, low budget. You got to do what you got to do. Right. Yeah, well. Got to do what you got. So the very last end scene where it's in the rain, mm-hmm. apparently they just, they use like a water truck and a fire hose to kind of like make it look like rain and which they did a pretty decent job. Yeah. It looked fucking real to me. Yeah. Well, I heard that this movie, like, I don't know if they ran out of film or something like that, but they, I know this, this movie, like it took them a year to come out. Like, right. Like it took a long time. I'd heard, um, and there's like two different Blu-ray versions out there right now for the slaughterhouse. There's the vinegar syndrome one, and then there's another one that's got like a red case or something like that. Um, the one that isn't vinegar syndrome has a apparently a 25 minute like not a it's like a feature of them touring around like you were talking about doing their thing right for to promote the movie. And he said the guy that I watched, and I, I'm sorry I can't remember his name. I'll try to include a link down below, but he was saying that that was one of the only redeeming things about that blu-ray is that they had all the same features from that on the vinegar syndrome plus more and a new interview or new uh you know commentary and stuff on the vinegar syndrome he said but the one thing that was missing is that featurette where they were like doing behind the scenes of like them filming uh and promoting the movie so i don't know if you're a big fan of this movie you might want to get both but you probably already have them anyway so what am i saying and then that's about it. Okay. Well, I mean, we now you want to go into the scenes, I guess. You know, oh, talk yeah, about, dude. What were some of your favorite scenes? Well, I mean, I you want to just digest there, this whole movie? There's a lot of things that I want to point out and kind of like laugh with, and uh, that I think are worth mentioning. First of all, this the movie starts out. The kids are at the lookout point in the woods. I guess it's a it's a lookout point, right? They're all getting drunk and like it looked like it was like. They're by a river or fucking lake or something. Well, whatever. It it was on the top of a mountain. I know that. Because they went to the top and the, 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 the deputy was cheating on his wife with some local girl. Yeah. And he was going up to Lookout Point to make out. It's like, of all the places that you decided to go, you go to a place. You go where all the kids are? Yeah, like, why would you do that? Right. So, but anyway, the kids end up leaving after talking to the deputy because he's like, keep it down up here. Don't you get into any trouble? And don't mention me being up here with this lady. I was giving her a ride home. (sighs) And so everybody leaves. There's like six kids. A couple stays to get it on. And this is the funniest thing to me because, like, it's a good scene. This is, like, one of the cooler scenes in the movie, I think. The kids go to, the, like, this dock, and they run, and he starts macking on her, and he's, like, kissing her hard. And all of a sudden, she starts laughing and running away from him. She's like, hey, mister. She's like, well, who do you think you are? And then he, she's just like, <laughs> <laughs> and she's running for fucking two miles, guys. Running. Not like play. You know, usually in a movie, they're like, ha ha, whatever, come get me. And they run to a car like a 50 feet away, maybe. Yeah, a little tickle fight here or something. This motherfucker was running through the fucking hills, like uh, through the forest to grandmother's house. She went. And I was like thinking to myself, like, what the fuck? Like, why are they running so far? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it was, was a little weird. That's more than a little playful jaunt. <laughs> right. Like, I mean, she's making him work for it. Go girl. <laughs> but Jesus Christ. They basically then stumble on a, a pig farm with a, like a rundown large bus when the 
when the the guy of the couple is all yelling at the pigs and slamming a shovel against the fence like well who the fuck do you think you are first of all <laughs> second of all you're trying to get your shit on why are you making so much goddamn noise right like you want to be interrupted by the fucking people that live at the house with the lights on like i don't <laughs> like what are you thinking dude I don't know, but anyway, they go to get their fuck on. And he gets to, he tries to get in the bus, and the girl like she's like, "Come and get me," <laughs> and she goes in there. And then as he's getting on, he sees he hears a pig oink. Yeah, he turns around and do and the way he gets hit in the face with that cleaver, bro. Yeah, it was pretty it was sudden. so violent and like fast. I was like, "Yes, <laughs> yeah. great kill." <laughs> Well, I, I think they were trying to mimic that whole hammer scene with the fucking Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Right. You know, because that was pretty, pretty intense for its time back in the day. But yeah, the girl runs onto the bus after the guy gets fucking slain. And then uh, he's all making pig noises and swinging at her with this fucking bone cutting meat cleaver. That's what they call it. Right. He's like, I got you that new bone clean, clean cutter cut, whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> whatever the fuck. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whatever the hell. <laughs> but yeah. Like she's he's like swinging it wildly in the bus and like hitting windows on the way. And then you just see blood squirt up on the window and they don't show the kill. Then the next intro title scene has that silly horn song that sounds like a cheap, sleazy, but fun show tune. Like, I don't know. Like, what kind of song was that? I don't know. It didn't. It seemed weird. Like yeah. they were, you were definitely tr- they were trying to make a contrast of like fun, silly, good times with the backdrop of like a horrible thing that just happened. You know, like you could tell. And they got this fun, happy song all to the slaughtering of a pig. And they ho- like when they they do that shit, dude. It just fucking. It really. It kind of was like ah oh, no. Like and I have Cannibal Holocaust. You know what I mean? I don't like those parts either. What was his name? The father, Lester Bacon? Yeah. Lester Bacon! <laughs> he has an old-time pig farm. He's getting pushed out of town because he's not been paying his property tax or some shit. What was it? Do you remember? It was that, I think. Yeah, his property tax. Yeah, like his business ran down, so he couldn't even afford to pay property tax anymore. So the county was going to come and collect the, the And he house. thought he'd pay his due, and he didn't have to pay it. Right. Like, that's real smart. Right. I understand it. Like, you kind of feel sympathetic for him until he starts murdering people. <laughs> Like, it's like, Jesus. But that's where he was like, those guys come out and he's like, I told you to get them mechanized. Get that goddamn mechanized. Why did you go mechanized? <laughs> mechanized. Like, what the fuck? And I told you to start that citrus farm. Dude, when I, in the beginning of the movie, in the title screen, by the way, when the pig's like flipping around, that's when I was like, all right. <laughs> oh, so they no. shock it in the back of the head and it's all flipping around in that machine, like ripping off its hair. Yeah. Is that what it was? Mm-hmm. It was like, and I was just like, and it's just legs are stiff and it's like flipping around. I was like, ah, and was it still alive or was it? No, he was dead by that point. Okay. They slit his throat before they put you were, him You were busy masturbating at that point. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it was like a face. Dude, it was literally like faces of death. <laughs> it really kind of was. I mean, it, it was like more clinical, like a, like a farm video would be, you know, like right. this is how we do it. And this is how the process is, you know, but... <laughs> But anyway, they give Lester Bacon 30 days to get out uh, of his house because they have the the sheriff go out there with these two businessmen, like you said, who worked for uh, Lester many, many moons ago. And uh, they're trying to make him a deal. I think it was $55,000, by the way, for his farm. And he could live on the property. And he could live on the property and even work for them. And he was like, hell no. 30% fat. Yeah. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Really? 30% fat. You're trying to clog our young Americans' hearts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. But and then, you know, Buddy, who has already murdered like two kids, apparently, uh, he's the son of Lester Bacon, who cuddles his pigs and, and sure as shit doesn't like people messing with them, no. obviously, that he kills pigs, too. They're like butchers. Like, it's weird. He, like, gets off on their relationship and then likes killing the things on top. Of, or, no, maybe he doesn't like killing them and he's grown fond of the pigs because they're not even butchering pigs anymore. Right. But you would think that they have to eat at some point in time and they would definitely eat the pigs instead of buy food, right? I would. <laughs> so so does Buddy kill his friends? Maybe. And that's why maybe, he has a disconnect? Maybe black pig is, like, his special friend. <laughs> okay, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's his bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking this shit. Girlfriend, huh? Squeal. Oh, man. Uh, maybe that's his fucking t- that's his lady. 
or his man, whatever. Yo, my lady. They, they all have holes down there. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, Jesus. <laughs> but it's almost as if he was like raised by pigs, though, in some way. You know what I mean? Like he just became one. Oh, yeah. Dude. Because his mentality is there. And he's just like some sort of like Tarzan story, but only with pigs. Well, they don't talk about his mom. Maybe he was like birthed from a pig. <laughs> his dad fucked pig. He came out of a pig. Oh. <laughs> I would expect him to have a bigger nose. <laughs> that would be that would have made this movie better for me. Yeah. Honestly. Like if he was like some fucking pig face like fucking murderer. Yeah. You know? I just feel like the cuffs never really came off on this movie. Like it has cool scenes, like ideas, and there is a few kills that I'm like, ooh. Like that one scene where the kid gets smacked in the fucking head mm. when he's wearing the snake mask and and he just smacks him and he's like jerking around on the ground. <laughs> right. I was like, Yeah, Texas Chainsaw, hell yeah. You know, like <laughs> shout out, baby. <laughs> but I don't know. So the other four kids who who separated from their friends who got murdered on the bus, uh, they lived. They basically are trying to shoot a horror movie. So it's shooting a horror movie in a horror movie kind of meta. And they decide that going to the pig farm that's like run down and nowhere longer operating is a good place to shoot the film, which honestly isn't a bad idea. But they, you know, obviously meet their... <laughs> Their problem firsthand at the uh, end of a fucking bone crushing meat cleaver and a pig boy, you know. So well, they actually end up getting out of there all right that time. Remember, they ended up leaving, and that's when the sheriff deputy. No, that's when Deputy Dave shows right, up. Right, but 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 first of all, I'm thinking to myself, like people live there. Like there's obviously somebody there. Right. Like why wouldn't you just ask, pay them money or something? I don't know. But yeah, you're a kid. You're just running. And these do not look like kids. They look like fucking adults, guys. <laughs> yeah, they like both of like these teenagers. movies are supposed to be like, you know, I don't know. But they're like, you know, 25, 28. Right. That guy definitely had hamburger meat like spilling out the top of his shirt. <laughs> like it was ridiculous. Anyway, they end up going to the butcher room of the slaughterhouse to shoot this like horror movie montage, which it looks like a shitty movie if you're asking to be. <laughs> Like, I don't know. It looked like a silly, like, it's just them having fun. They're, yeah, like, they're put clearly some rubber mask. Yeah, they're clearly not taking this seriously. I'm, I'm happy they're enjoying themselves, but I'll never watch it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh, but the, 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 their friends were like hanging in that meat room and Lester found out. Remember that? And he was all like, that's not them. Why are you killing them? They're just harmless people, just kids wandering around. What do they do to deserve it? And then his son like grabs that cleaver. Yeah, like he's gonna like kill he's his gonna dad. kill him. And I think that was an ad lib. I feel like that was an ad lib from the the actor. Yeah, I really do. Like I don't think that that was intended there, but I could be wrong. That's just my guess. Um, but I thought it was a nice touch. But this this happens right before the kids are shooting their horror film, and they're like riding around wearing these cheap shitty masks, one with like a beard and stuff that looks like a like a troll two mask, by right. the way. And the other one, the other mask was pretty cool. It's it was a snake that cobra. mask, yeah. yeah the cobra mask. It reminded me of that movie, the 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 dream movie, where they like dream about the snake man or whatever. That's got like I can't remember. It's called Dreamscape. I don't. Think you ever so. seen that, Randy Quaid? No, dude. Yeah, he should can't... I see this? I mean, it's okay. It's not a bad movie. It's a cool 80s. Like, it was a bigger budget film. But anyway, the kids, they shoot their thing to the silly song about, you know, in the house and some like, and he's got flesh in his mouth. You better <laughs> run from the house. It's time to get out of the house. Like, what the <laughs> fuck, dude? Like, I was like, this song is not good. Like, I was like, man, I could write way better lyrics than that. Like... <laughs> I mean, it's cool, I guess. It's got that 80s flair, and I'm not trying to make fun of the band. Maybe they're really good, but I just, for whatever reason, the lyrics in that song just bothered me. Some 80s weird shit, you know, whatever. Well, like I said, like, all the music in this movie was done by Vantage Point, I believe the name was, except for that Rockabilly song. Yeah, okay, that's what it was. It was like a punky kind of song, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, that's kind of edgy for its time, you know, to put that kind of, like, song in there. Yeah, for sure. You know, I don't know if I recognized it necessarily, but I was like, oh, that's cool. But they probably just grabbed some local band and were like, hey, man, you want to do a song in a movie? <laughs> yeah, man, let's do it. And they all fucked a few pigs and they were like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so Lester, after seeing the, the kids that Buddy killed, devises a plan to kill the guys messing with him to buy them out. He invites the two business partners out to the farm to make a deal or kill them. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not even like a plan. He just like calls him up. Hey, I changed my mind. Why don't you come on over? I'm real sorry. <laughs> I'm real sorry. I'm old and stubborn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you said the deputy shows up at that time. Yeah. And instead of the sheriff, go ahead and tell your scene. That's your favorite. One of your favorite. No, scene. it's not. Well, that's, so he, that's where you said you it kicked off for you. Oh, so he goes in and investigates the house. And he's looking through, and as he gets to the cooler where the other two teenagers are hanging on meat hooks, he doesn't even open the fucking door all the way, which is ridiculous, and right. just sticks his hand in with his gun. Like, dude, what are you pointing your gun at, dude? You don't even, you can't even see into the fucking room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that was a little weird for me too. But then the door shuts on his arm chopping it off and then he chops off his fucking hand and that's the cover by the way yeah and then i just love that he comes out with his gun and then mime shooting him with it and then drops his dead hand in front of his face yeah because the, the hand's still holding the gun yeah when he's holding he's like bang bang <laughs> <laughs> and i thought his acting was pretty decent right there i mean it wasn't the best but like right better than most and that's it i, I just i enjoyed that scene okay well, there, the, the, so there was a kill, uh, one of the, the business guys who were kind of ch- the, the chummier business guy who had known Lester for a long time. Right. The and, business end guy. Yeah. He was like the nicer of the two guys. The one that suggested he do start a citrus farm. Yeah. He gets off by, uh, being picked up by Buddy. Not sure if he get, like gets his head crushed. Yeah, I I couldn't tell. He just like he's like hanging from the rafters. He's like waving, like swinging his fucking meat cleaver bone crusher at him. He's like, hey, please wait. And he's like, the jury's out. Says you're guilty. And it's like he's like waving these dead bodies' arms and shit. They're like they're asking to raise their hands, and he's like he like raise both the little bodies' hands and shit. And it's like, <laughs> it was oh well, stupid. Yeah, <laughs> it was stupid. It did. It just felt like it could have been a better scene right there. I like the end of that scene, though. Like, after, like, you see his feet dangling. Okay. And then, like, the drainage for all the blood. It just felt like almost like a scene from Psycho or something. I honestly didn't know his head was being crushed. How could you not with all the blood squirting out of his face? I don't know. They didn't have a cracking sound or anything. It was just like, oh, oh, and he was just like, <laughs> like, very clearly too long. They should have cut it. Did like, you watch the director's cut? I watched the one on fucking Prime. Yeah. Okay. You watched the same one then. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Like I got that he was getting his head crushed. I mean, it's obvious. That when but you, normally you hear a crack noise or something like that to like really drive home the point. Right. And it didn't. It was just like all of a sudden blood started to appear and his head wasn't moving. Nothing. There was no prosthetic to crush his head afterwards. He just dies. Like it's like bloop. <laughs> I don't know. That that was a weird kill. Then the deputy's mistress like gets her neck cut. Because then it cuts to a scene where he's like, after he kills the sheriff, he comes out in his fucking attire, and he had like, yeah, he's, he's like ob- obviously not in the same outfit because there's no way that Buddy would have fit into that, right? <laughs> well, he doesn't, and he's like, he's like cut it open to the point where it could fit around his obese body, right? <laughs> and it just looks ridiculous. And they play that awesome fucking rockabilly song, right? And like he doesn't know how to drive the car, but he supposedly, like, supposedly, but he like he figures he figures it out pretty quick, and yeah. then he fucking just goes hog wild, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah hog wild. Uh, anyway, they said that in the movie, didn't they? He's gone hog wild. <laughs> yeah. like, oh lord! I mean, I appreciate it, but like, like that's one of my favorite scenes. I don't know why it, it just it felt really cool to me that he just didn't give a fucking shit. He's like, like, well, he speeds past the deputy's like mistress, right? right. Like, and then she tries to catch up to him, like right. he's playing a game or something. Like he finally got some balls and is like trying to have fun with her. She's right. like, you trying to get my pants or something? <laughs> And then it's him, and he's, he's like, oh, my God. He, <sighs> yeah, and he just slits her fucking throat, which is cool. Um, but no, the way that he did, remember, he fucking chased her down. And I think it was into, like, it was some kind of contraption. And he's, like, stabbing through the little grates of this little thing that she's in. And she's, you know, fucking taunting her out the other side. And it's almost like he was riling up a pig. Right. Till the kill hole. 
Right. And see if she comes up the kill hole, grabs a fucking neck, and slits it like she's fucking. Well, yeah. There's definitely pig themes in that for yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, that's a good observation, though. I, I didn't write that down, but yeah. <laughs> And then, like, one of the things I really liked about this film, and I always love this when they do these kind of edits in the movie, is when he cuts her throat, it, like, cuts to the scene where they're, like, cutting a tomato. (laughs) You remember that? Like, I always love when they do that in a movie, like... Like, right. you know, it's just like perfect or they have like the scream echo out. I always think that's cool. Um, but there's a scene. I think it happened a little bit earlier than that. I didn't mention it while we were talking about it. But I think it's before Deputy Dave even shows up at the farm that uh, Buddy is in a tree or on a fence and he's holding this dead bird mm-hmm. and he's like blowing on it. Oh, the dead. Yeah, that was like a real dead bird. Yeah. And he was just blowing on it and blowing on it. And, and then he just drops it and just like stomps the shit out of it. Yeah, and it's like a real dead bird. So right. it's like, and it, what I tried to think of what what was this? What was the point of this scene? He's bird brained. Like know. no, what it would it was like because his dad was so upset with him about him killing those teenagers. I was he thinking, needed to win one up on something smaller than him. Well, no, th- not only that, that that maybe he thought that he could take life, maybe he could give it, and then when he found out he couldn't give life, he's like, "Well, fuck it, I'm gonna kill." Because that's oh, what I'm huh. gonna. Wow. And maybe I'm going too deep. No, into maybe, that scene. but yeah, that's I'm I appreciate it, Patrick. It's awesome. But that's I didn't even think about that. That's uh, pretty cool. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, no, no, man. I, I mean, I guess I could see that, and but I don't know. I don't know. Well, I don't. Maybe maybe it's in the commentary of the movie. Yeah. Well, I'm, well I'll tell you when I get the Blu-ray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there is one, uh, another scene where the other business partner shows up and Buddy dumps him in the meat grinder. That was a cool scene. Dude, such a cool scene. But it wasn't, no, it wasn't. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, it was cool because you could, his acting was good. It was cool because you see bits of meat coming out of the grinder, but they didn't show him going in. And I know that's a technically really hard scene to do. Right. Uh, especially for the time. Well, that's when your imagination's got to right play a role i mean i get it but i just wish i would have seen more blood splatting up yeah you know it was cool how he was writhing around and he was like looking like it really hurt it just definitely would be a movie i'd like to see redone oh well maybe him he maybe the guy could do it same guy yeah and he could get a bigger budget for fucking well the thing is gore. i think the thing that really drove this movie home was the guy who played Buddy. Okay, yeah. Uh, maybe you get somebody else that could do that good. I know you didn't really, you know, care for it, but I really thought that, I don't know, I, enjoy, I like at first I, did, I hated his character, and then it, it really grew on me. No, I mean, that's fine. Dude, I'm glad you really liked it. I really did. I just, I don't know. I think I was just in maybe another mood, not a mood for that one. Right. I was looking for something like a, a little, little less straightforward, because I feel like Madman was a little bit more like cryptic in like a way. artsy yeah. in a way even though it's like schlocky and silly right uh and it doesn't show all of its kills and it has a lot of weird acting moments it just felt a little bit more like it was trying to present itself differently than this one yeah. this one's just like <laughs> you know which is cool i just i don't know i feel bad and i'm sure you guys hate me but whatever <laughs> i'm not gonna lie <laughs> There was that one scene where the four, the two guys make a deal with the two girls to visit the slaughterhouse for an hour for 20 bucks if they can last in there. Dude, you're going past one of my favorite scenes. What? Go ahead. Like the scene where they're like all at the pig out uh, festival or whatever, where it's like they got live. Oh, music. It, was the, it was the fucking prom or whatever the fuck. Uh, whatever it was. It was some kind of festival. <laughs> like, there's that really fucking awesome Sith song that's on, the 80s fucking... Oh, yeah, I remember that, yeah. And then, like, there's some kind of storm and the power goes out, right? And, like, the dude uh, who, like, speaks up and tries to calm everybody down, just the way he fucking says it, he was like, Oh, okay, you know, that's what happens when you rock and roll a little too hard, you know, but it's just the storm there and uh, everybody's coming and uh, exit through the back doors over there. <laughs> it's just like, Which- I cannot mime it like he said it, but it is such a gem line. Do you know what's funny about that whole scene too? Is you can still hear the guitar, <laughs> yeah, like, like the and the drums dying. Yeah, down yeah, well. you can hear the you can hear the amp like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, so they just turn out the light. <laughs> <laughs> it just seemed funny to me. I don't know why, but That's yeah, what happens when you rock and roll a little too hard, you know. <laughs> You just stop playing because <laughs> the lights go out. Like, that's not rocking hard. You're just fucking lazy. You're scared of dark. 
I mean, I, I mean, it was funny. I just, I don't know. I don't know why. I was just like, why is this happening, though? <laughs> right. I was like, why is this important in this film? Like, I think they were just trying to push them to get out of that into the next scene. Right. Of, yeah, you know, I know. Right. I figured, but I mean, it just, I don't know. It just seemed like so unimportant yeah. to me. I don't know. But yeah, like they, they the, the girls and the guys who are at that party who leave to go outside, make that bet outside. They're like, why don't we go back to the slaughterhouse? You know, because that's a good idea. And they go back to the slaughterhouse and the one girl, the head, uh, the main final girl, I can't think of her name offhand. She says, well, I can do it, you know. And then they go and the other girl's like, well, this is the craziest thing I've ever done. I don't know. This might be a bad <laughs> idea. And I'm like, yeah, it sure is. But they go there and then the guys put on masks and like hide. They're like, we'll wait down the road. And they do. But they put on masks and go there to scare the girls, of course, you know. Uh, loosen up their pants apparently because that's how you get into girls pants you either right, say something yeah. really sweet and fucking endearing uh, to your friends at dinner time after being a complete douchebag and singing medieval songs Nagging. or you scare the shit out of them until they want to take their pants off because <laughs> they need protected <laughs> That's usually how it goes. Am I right? Like yeah, yeah, in these much. old movies, I'm just that's saying a classic 80s. Trope, <laughs> yeah. For sure. One of the guys that that's the scene where one of the mask guys gets the ax to the head and he's all jerking around like that scene was really cool. Oh, it was. Yeah, I really like that. And then the other girl, I think her name was Annie or something like that. She like screams and then you don't see what happened to her until later. She's on a fucking hook. Yeah. Which was kind of like a missed opportunity. I'm like, what the fuck? Why didn't you just yeah. show what happened to her? Like, uh, why? That's more kills, man. All that money went to that police car, man. <laughs> <laughs> so. She was like hung next to all the bodies that, that like Buddy apparently has collected. And e the, each of them are on the hook swinging around. And Lester sings the little piggy song like, This little piggy went to the market. Dude. And this little piggy went wee 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 all the way home. So good. <laughs> like another great scene. I, I mean, I, I mean, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I think I really like that actor and the way he portrayed it. The farmer. Right? Yeah, I think he... I really wish I would have enjoyed it as much as you did. Like, it sucks. Like, it's all right, dude. Everybody gets their own, you know... He, he like, that's where he does his whole speech, though, right? Where he's, like, singing the song. Yeah. And then he's like, well, you shouldn't be trespassing or something like that. Like, that's what you get for trespassing. <laughs> it's like, no, you're on a murder spree at this point. <laughs> like, it's not just about fucking trespassing. And like, then he finds out, like, when they fucking have her down at the table, he's like, don't kill her just yet. Yeah. And he's like, what's your name? And he finds out it's the sheriff's daughter. And it's like, oh, it looks like we got Lizzie her. Borden, <laughs> eh? And that's where I thought he was going to say, oh, like the axe murderer. Right. Lizzie Borden, you know what I mean? Or whatever the fuck. I don't remember. Like, fuck. Like, and it wasn't. I was like, she. he's like, oh, you're just the the, sh the sheriff's daughter. We got well, ourselves a here. prize hog. And then he's like, real meat cutter is better than machine meat. You know, like, he's like talking about, see these tools? This one's for lifting the skin. I bet you I could skin you in under 90 seconds or something like that. Um, But he cuts her finger. Yeah. That scene right there where he cuts her finger, I don't know if it was her hand, but whoever it was. I think they really got cut. Dude, yeah. It looked it real. It looked shit. real. Like, I was like, ooh, I don't like watching that for some reason. <laughs> you know? Because, like, when you cut your finger on a paper cut, you're right. like, oh, mm, no, no, no. You can no, actually no. see the, like, layers of flesh. Right. Yeah. Like, it looked real. It totally looked real. I was real. like, what the fuck? Almost to the point that I think, yeah. I think someone maybe actually. Maybe it was an accident? Yeah. And then they're like, well, we're going to put it in the movies. <laughs> yeah. Great. Great work. I'll pay you $100. <laughs> Uh, really? Hey, I'll buy you a pack of beer. How about that? <laughs> All right, good deal. Um, but she kicks Le uh, Lester into some spikes after uh, her, was it her dad came in the room or something like that? But she kicks him into some, like, hooks or something. Right. And then Lester, like, pierces his back on it. He's like, Arr! <laughs> And then she, uh, but she doesn't kill him. And then the sheriff comes to his daughter's rescue, you know, but Lester returns to stab him in the back. So, like, he's like, rah, with a screwdriver or a meat cleaver or some it knife. Was, it was some kind of knife, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, she shoots him in the chest when they go, <laughs> go outside, right? Right. And then he still doesn't die. He just gets back up. And she up. drops the fucking gun. 
Right. I don't understand that either. Like, I don't know what the fuck. But the funny thing was, is they <laughs> they go off to the police car where Lester gets up and beats on it till she starts the car and <laughs> runs over Lester's head, popping it, which is probably my well, no, favorite like, thing. The first thing, like, they drive away and they're coming back. And, and he's, he's like, he's on the ground with a meat cleaver, like, crawling towards it. Like, he's going to fucking do something. Yeah, he's just not giving up. Like, <laughs> motherfucker's dying. He's going to die. Like, I go get my car and I'm like, I'm going to chase you guys down and run you off to a ditch but you see him and he's like oh ah! that his head like is suddenly miraculously laying in a different way and his head gets run over which i love scenes where they run over people's heads yeah like i'm sorry i it's do good. like it's, i love when people back over people with a car like after they run over him too like they're like no no i've seen too many of these movies you know like <laughs> like that's why i loved fucking uh the scene in uh fucking jeepers creepers oh i was about to say though at the what was the other one I can just popped into my head? The one from we I just mentioned the movie Toxic Avenger, where they're like oh. running people over and shit in their cars. It's like a game to them. <laughs> well, anytime somebody's head explodes into a like a melon, like on a yeah. car, under it, over it, side of it, whatever, <laughs> I'm all about that shit. Like popping heads is like one of the best fucking things in horror. <laughs> that's a that's where you go, yeah. <laughs> Head popping is awesome. <laughs> yes. But yeah, that's the scene where they, like the dad's in the car and she's like, there's a couple of times where she goes to grab the knife and like pull it out, but she realizes she did that. He might bleed out right, or whatever it is, but it looks painful. So she doesn't want to hurt him. And then they're driving off, going to the hospital and then Buddy's in the back. Huzzah! <laughs> <laughs> and he like which has happened in numerous slasher very films. very many films like and then he grabs the knife and stabs her well about to you don't really see it happen and then that's the cut of the movie and in this version i noticed that they apparently restored this version they added the end song which was like <laughs> some grindcore shit oh like, yeah dude and i was like wait wait what <laughs> i was like that couldn't have been back then that's what i was thinking i was like wait a there's minute. there's no way i was yeah. like that's not that sounds like uh, maybe and i was like i looked at it and it was like a restored version and then i went online and looked at the youtube version and it is a completely different song yeah so i wonder if they didn't have the rights to the end song of the movie and then just put a different thing up so they could actually have that release probably you know what i mean yeah so i don't know it's a good film though yeah it's good it's a film it's a film and <laughs> and you watched it <laughs> no for real guys like i did enjoy it i had fun with it i was just highly impressed with madman i am a fan uh i'm a fan now and i had never seen it and i feel bad that i hadn't but i'm glad to find a movie like that because like you know when you're rifling through all these piles of like meh like you're like scooping the cat and you, box and, and you and you find that one it's like yeah, yeah. all right cool like this is a good one mm. and so. that's what that's, that's funny because it's like the opposite to me it's like i feel like i've done i found that with slaughterhouse like this is a, i'm glad you did patrick yeah i'm glad i'm happy for I'm you happy too <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's all about patrick you know <laughs> well, what did you guys think so you obviously would pick this one over the other one we already know your score you gave this one an 8.5 the other one a 6.5 or 7 yeah so i would definitely like to see some more slashers in the future but we have some other stuff that we're going to be watching like guys we're thinking about watching night beast and night killer together so it's like two night movies we also have um invasion of the blood farmers and uh splatter farm that are two farm movies that we thought about watching and we'll figure it out i'll find a way i'll find a way oh yeah i'll find a way <laughs> it's from fucking you know what that's from it's from uh jack frost <laughs> he's like i'll find your way you know like where because he gets caught by that guy the cop you almost had a little bit of a chucky vibe in your voice. yeah oh yeah a little bit huh yeah <laughs> the the old one you mean yeah old chucky the, the brad dura version right yeah okay this week's secret code word that you listen to the end is oink oink, by the way, guys. But I would love to hear you guys uh, and what you thought about these movies. Like Patrick said, is he the better judge of uh, movies or am I just a piece of shit? I'm, I'm going to go with I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> so uh, you guys pick and choose. And uh, I quit. I'm fucking done. <laughs> anyway, guys, we'll see you next week for a brand new episode of Beyond the Void. And as always, long live the void.